Okay, listen. I know this is an incredibly cliched way to start things, but but I don't think I have much time. Because of that fact, I, I'm going to try to keep this short and simple, all right? Screw the flowerly language. Who gives a crap about making the reader feel at ease? No, don't ease. Not even for a second. Just stay on your toes. You must never let your guard down. I did, and look where it got me. I'm getting ahead of myself, though. I know how annoying that is. Forgive me. I, I, I'm a little panicked. Oh, I'm so young. I can't believe this is it. It started pretty straightforwardly, I think. It's the kind of beginning you'd see in a horror movie and think, Wow, did they even try? It started with a stupid game because I was a stupid teenager. And that's what we do. Teenagers are so... Teenagers are so bored, man, all the time. That's why they get into crazy stuff like this. I really long for some boredom now. If only I'd known how good it was to be bored. To not feel on edge 24 hours a day. Regardless, I did it because I was stupid. And I thought the game was stupid, too. You ever heard of a skinwalker? That's really how it started. Tim. Stinking Tim. Out of all my friends in high school, Tim was the one who always rubbed me the wrong way. He's just a little creepy. I'm not trying to slight him, honestly. He just seems... otherworldly? I don't know. That feels like I'm giving him too much credit. I said no flowery language, didn't I? I, I said short and simple. I can't beat around the truth. Tim is a creep. Or he was. I don't know what he's up to these days, but I, I don't imagine he's changed much. The day he suggested we go hunting for skinwalkers, he was fully entrenched in his creep persona. And I knew it was stupid when I agreed. I knew it made me feel a little sick. The thought of going in search of a creature like that, even if I 100% didn't believe they existed at the time. It felt wrong just saying the word out loud. Skinwalker. Just hearing it has the hairs on the back of my neck standing up. But one taunt of scared of an urban legend, and I was ready to take down a skinwalker with my bare hands. Really, I was gonna do it. Never could resist a challenge. Especially when I knew I could win. So we did what any teenage delinquents on the search for a cryptid would, and in the dead of the night we found a cornfield with a huge square footage. Not a difficult find for my bumpkin town. As though Tim could sense my apprehension, he sent a wolfish grin my way and said, You first. And remembering that only a few hours earlier he'd insulted me for even insinuating that I wasn't down for crossing paths with a literal monster, I didn't argue. I sucked in a deep breath, puffed out my chest, and stepped into the field. Immediately, my friends were masked from my view. A few steps into the stalks, and I couldn't tell if I was three rows down or thirty, and every crunch of husks and stalks under my feet had my heart leaping in my chest. I kept going. The challenge was to get through, all the way to the other side of the field, and I was determined not to lose. I could still hear my friends taunting me like they knew I wanted to just get out of there and hang out at Walmart like other degenerates our age were. Their voices carried over the corn stalks, and in an attempt to lose them, I retreated deeper into the fray. The field was big, and the thing about cornfields is you can't even see an entrance or an exit, so it's all a big mystery where you even are at any given moment. It was a windy night, so there was a lot of rustling, and I told myself that my real fear was of a coyote, not a skinwalker. It's a lot harder to lie to yourself about your fears when you're facing them head on. I swear, it looked like a crow. It landed right in front of me atop a cornstalk to my left. It looked me right in the eye, cocked its head curiously. Hi, I muttered like an idiot. What are you looking at me like that for? Its head tilted further, slowly like it was looking me over, trying to decide what to make of me. Eventually, its neck was bent at an unnatural anger, eyes still locked on mine. When its beak finally opened, a crackling laugh poured out, crow-like, but... but not. I've since watched many a YouTube clip of crows talking, mimicking, and this was not that. It spread its wings and shifted its footing on the cornstalk. Just as I thought it was about to fly off, something inside it snaps, and the bird is at my feet, dead. Heart pounding, I slowly crouch to look at the thing. Its neck is broken. There's blood pooling around it, but I don't really know where it's coming from. I couldn't see any open wounds. And then it's moving. The crow's head jerks back. An awful hacking sound erupts from its beak, and the blood that is pooled around it moves too. It's sentient. It must be. How else could it slither like that? 
Before my eyes, a figure grows, rips out of the flesh of the crow, builds itself out of the bone and blood and sinew. It's bigger than me, too. Tall, towering over me, and it stinks. The odor wafting off of it is familiar and awful. I didn't know this at the time, but after a few more years of life under my belt, I can place that that smell is death. It has long, gangly limbs, and stretched over its bones is pallid gray eyes. It looks sick. A thin sheen of moisture sweat covers the creature standing before me, now sucking in heavy breaths and then blowing that death smell back into my face on every exhale. I've convinced myself at this point that this is a dream, or an aberration, or something. This isn't the kind of thing that happens in real life, especially not my life. I'm trembling, but I can't feel it. I know because my vision is shaking. It opens its mouth to speak and its jaw cracks as it opens wider than it should. When its voice finally reaches me, it's garbled like a dozen people whispering at once. You shouldn't have come. Cliché, right? <laughs> my vision is blurring. Am I crying? Oh lord, if Tim could see me now. I, 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 I didn't know. Quiet. I obey. Without question, my, my throat closes, and honestly, I'm not sure if I could even make a noise if I wanted to. It reaches out with one of its disgustingly long limbs and touches me right on the chin. Its skin is ice cold, slimy. Its touch is surprisingly light, like a brush of skin from a loved one. The chill shudders down my spine. I think I'll use you. The rest is kind of a blur. I, I don't know how I got back to my friends. I don't know how I got back into Tim's car, how I got into bed that night. I just remember being alone with Tim that night as he drove me back home. Man, I knew that would be a bust. I laughed. It sounded genuine. And my throat hurt making the sound. Yeah, well, you can't just expect a skinwalker to jump out at you. Tim huffed. That was four years ago. I'm a college graduate now. I put all that behind me, or at least tried to. I knew I could never live a productive life if all my life I could only dwell on the time I met a skinwalker and lived to tell the tale. Except, I'm not so sure I did. Recently, there's been pounding on my walls, banging on my windows. I've done my research. I know how skinwalkers present themselves now. I know what to look for. I never say the word aloud, not anymore. I think it's coming back for me. It said it wanted to use me, and it never did. I've, I've seen, but not seen, faces pressed up against my windows more than I'd like to admit. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. I can hear faint whispers of my name. It's my time. Don't. Don't come looking for me.